Hello, welcome to today's edition of A Treasury of Daily Prayer. Before we begin with our devotion for today, um, just a few points of information. Uh, tonight, uh, the Church Council of Zion Cologne is going to be meeting to discuss plans um, for how we're going to conduct our parking lot communion service on Sunday the 17th. Uh, that meeting is tonight at 7.30 with the church council. Uh, Winter church council is going to meet tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the church to discuss and plan how we're going to carry out the parking lot communion worship there at Winter at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. And so meeting is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Uh, anyway, with this uh, communion service, please tell um, your your neighbor, or your, your fellow Christians, your fellow church members at your congregations that we're doing this. Uh, uh, one thing that I found out at least here recently, um, not everybody's following the information that gets out. We're trying to get it out the best that we can, but let people know what we're doing. Communion parking lot worship starting at 9 a.m. Sunday, May 17th, the Trinity Winter parking lot. Uh, 10.30 a.m at Zion Cologne parking lot and 2 p.m. in the parking lot of St. John's Brewster. Um, and so uh, we'll be doing that. We'll get together. It's not going to be a full-blown worship service. We're going to have uh, confessional service, uh, prayer, uh, scripture reading, short devotion, and the distribution of the sacrament. Um, and then uh, everyone will be dismissed home. So once again, hopefully you'll be you'll be able to make it. And the planning is all for we want to make this as safe and sanitary as possible. Also, uh, a notice to the members uh, at Trinity Lutheran in Winter. Uh, Leona Mathis was called home to her eternal rest by our Lord yesterday. Uh, funeral arrangements are pending. Um, and as soon as we get those arrangements done, uh, hopefully sometime today, uh, I will be letting people know how we're going to do this. Um, more than likely, and I can't say this for sure, more than likely uh, there there will be a larger uh, a lar there will be a larger funeral gathering in the future. Um, but uh, will that remains to be seen. Um, so that is our information for today. Um, and today we're going to look at the devotion on one of the ten, uh, one of the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment, which says, "Honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy long life on the earth." Forsooth, how many still know what that word is? Or how about forthwith, or perchance? Such words are seldom used anymore in our changing English language. Then there are other words that are used every day but seem little understood, like the words authority and respect, or, to put them together, respect for authority. It's interesting that God begins his second table of the law, the one that speaks about showing love to him by showing love to our fellow man, with a commandment that deals with authority and respect. Let's see why. If only we could see who stands behind those who have authority over us. The fourth commandment starts with father and mother, the closest and most basic leaders for us. But it doesn't stop there. With its command to honor those in authority, it extends also to other spheres of life, such as the church, school, and government. Notice the commandment demands, demands honor toward those in authority. Love we are to show toward all, but honor asks for more. Honor refers to recognition of, respect for, and proper response to the authority of a superior. Where do they obtain such authority? Do we honor our parents because we owe our lives to them? Because they are stronger and wiser than us as children? Because they took good care of us? Or because they are God's representatives through whom he exercises authority over us and channels his blessings to us? As Christians, we know the answer. Parents and presidents are flawed. 
teachers and pastors may make mistakes and mismanage their authority, but it is still God who put them there. They are his representatives, his stand-ins, his babysitters over us. No matter what their warts and wrinkles may be, a gracious God wants to channel his blessings to us through them. A government, even though it be humanistic, keeps basic law and order. An employer, even though he be self-serving, puts food on the table. A teacher, even though he be anti-family, imparts basic skills because they are God's representatives and channel his blessings to us, we honor, serve, and obey them. Only when they command something contrary to what God has said do we refuse to follow. When we honor his visible representatives, we are really honoring the invisible Lord. By connecting a promise with this commandment, God shows us how vital for the well-being of our home and society he considers honor for those in authority. Luther explains it this way, This, then, is the fruit and the reward, that whoever keeps this commandment will enjoy good days, happiness, and prosperity. On the other hand, the penalty for him who disobeys it is that he will perish sooner and never be happy in life. For in the scriptures, to have long life means not merely to grow old, but to have everything that pertains to long life, health, wife and child, livelihood, peace, good government, and so on, without which this life can neither be heartily enjoyed nor long endure. What an awesome responsibility to be God's stand-in. As parents, to hold in our hands a new life and be responsible for shaping it, not only for earth but eternity. As governing officials, to make decisions always and only for the well-being of the citizens of the land. As pastors, to feed the flock of God with his word and be answerable for each soul in their care. As teachers, to help shape growing intellect and equip future generations for productive lives. Those whom God has placed in authority gain honor by showing genuine concern for the well-being of those under their authority. Authority is not a club to wield powerfully, but a responsibility to weigh prayerfully. Thank the loving Father for his Son, Jesus. He put aside heavenly authority to bring us eternal gain. He followed his Father's will perfectly, even to the rough wood of the cross and the raging fires of hell, that we who so often dishonor, disrespect, and disregard authority might look forward with delight to heaven. While still on earth as his pardoned children, whether under or in authority, we can show our delight by the way we deal with each other. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help me in love to honor my earthly superiors so that I will be obedient to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day. And uh, just remember that we do these devotions every single day, uh, Monday through Friday. A reminder that this weekend, while we are doing parking lot worship together on Sunday, um, I am going to be recording a worship service and putting it up on YouTube and Facebook, um, if that's something that you want to do, watch this weekend as well. Have a wonderful day.